Yeah. So complications is important when we talk about measles uh, because measles results in mucosal damage because it basically affects the respiratory mucosa and the eyes and all of that, right? So uh, as, as a result of that, there can be widespread mucosal damage and it can also result in significant immunosuppression which is why complications in measles is very common. And uh, at least 30% of patients who get measles will have at least one complication. Uh, and who is more at risk of these complications? It is usually patients who are immunocompromised, um, women who are pregnant, if they get measles, then they are at a higher risk. And if the child or, or the patient has a vitamin A deficiency, or if the patient is uh, malnourished, and if the patient is too young or too old, then these category of people are at a higher risk of developing complications if they get infected with measles. So what are these complications of measles? So one of the most common complication is uh, the secondary infection, which is uh, most common in that is uh, otitis media and uh, diarrhea. So secondary infections, when we say it could be a bronchopneumonia can happen, uh, bacteremia can happen, gastroenteritis is very common. Uh, diarrhea, we see in almost 8% of children who get, me who get measles. Otitis media also is seen in almost 6% of children who get measles. And if there's a latent tuberculosis uh, infection, then that can also get reactivated. So, uh, so this is one of the issues. And uh, the other thing is gastrointestinal complications. So diarrhea is one thing. The child can have persistent diarrhea for a prolonged period, even after getting recovered from measles. And uh, um, other things like uh, gingostromatitis, hepatitis, mesenteric lymphadenitis, appendicitis. So all of these can result as a complication of measles. The problem with this is that it can result in malnutrition. And in a country like India, where uh, uh, you know malnutrition is a major concern, pediatric concern for us, uh, measles along with malnourishment can have a very bad effect on the health of the uh, child. Uh, pulmonary complications are also there, especially bronchopneumonia is very common and it's the most common cause of measles-associated death in children. Uh, it occurs in, like I said, 6% of cases. So this is one thing. Sometimes bronchiectasis can also occur and, and because of that, the, the person will be susceptible to future respiratory infections as well because of bronchitis, they, they more easily they can get respiratory infections. Ocular complications can also happen like uh, keratitis, which is a very common cause of blindness and corneal ulceration also has been seen. Sometimes rarely, although it's not very common, we can have cardiac complications like myocarditis and pericarditis as well. Uh, next slide, please. So neurological complications is the dreaded thing in measles. Um, it's not very common, but then it is fairly common because we do have almost one to two in thousand uh, per thousand cases, uh, child children can have encephalitis. Uh, or they can have other manifestations also, like an acute disseminated encephalomyelitis, or uh, more seriously, they can have a subacute sclerosing pan encephalitis also. So encephalitis is seen in uh, uh, almost one to two per thousand cases and usually this happens in, immediately so within a few days of rash like within a couple of days two three days of rash the child if the child is starting to have headache and vomiting stiffness neck stiffness meningeal irritation and things like that then we will have to definitely suspect a neurological involvement and uh, immediately test for that and treat accordingly do a csf lumbar uh, CSF analysis and then test uh, treat accordingly. Acute disseminated encephalitis also can happen. It's a demyelinating disease. This is also fairly common. It happens in one in thousand cases. Uh, this usually happens after the rash is gone. So uh, within two weeks of the rash, during the recovery phase, uh, the child can suddenly start having again fever, headache, stiffness, seizures, and uh, other uh, signs as well, like ataxia, myoclonus, uh, chorioathetosis. All of these can happen. Signs of myelitis can happen, like paraplegia, quadriplegia, <coughs> sorry, sensory loss, uh, loss of bladder control, bubble control, all of this can happen. And uh, uh, this is a serious complication as well, because almost 10 to 20% of ADM cases are, have a associated mortality also. 
एस एस पी और साबक्यूटिंग पैन एंड कैफिलाइटिस इज अ फेटल डिजीज इट्स अ प्रोग्रेसिव डीजेनरेटिव डिजीज ऑफ द सी एन एस दिस इज नॉट एन इमीडिएट कॉम्प्लिकेशन इट हैपन ऑलमोस्ट सेवन टू टेन ईयर्स आफ्टर द मीजल्स वायरस इन्फेक्शन सो वी डोंट रियली नो हाउ द पैथोजेंसिस हैपन्स बट इट्स मोस्ट प्रॉबेबली बिकॉज ऑफ अ परसिस्टेंट इन्फेक्शन विद अ जेनेटिक वेरियंट ऑफ द मीजल्स वायरस सो एस एस पी ई इज डेंजरस बिकॉज इट इज फेटल एंड इट हैज various stages uh, and uh, towards the end of it there's no treatment for it as well so that's the problem so the relentless and fatal course of ssp is very is what you know tells us that we need to uh, do a measles vaccination because it's very easy to prevent measles just by doing a routine immunization but then if we fail to do that uh, immunization then the effects of measles if if a child is ending up in neurological sequelae then uh, that's a major problem.